today we're speaking with uh, Ali Dadgar. Um, Dadgar is Iranian born. He's a multidisciplinary experimental artist working across image, text, and object based media and performance. Dadgar holds an MFA in art practice from UC Berkeley and a BFA from California College of Arts and Crafts. For the present time, he is enjoying a fruitful and inspired practice in isolation and margins. Ali, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So good to see you. Good to um, see you. Let's uh, start with the, the first of probably the easiest question. Um, what are the themes and ideas that run through your creative practice? Well, that's a um, very interesting question because of this past um, 14 months of this strangeness this um, separation from from the communities or groups or um, um, outside, basically. So this, you know, I'm referring to the COVID uh, limitations and being isolated. Um, it it sort of prompt me to have a deeper layer of focus on uh, myself, which is like, I, I, I couldn't be happier when, you know, it's, um, I sort of dove deeper in certain issues and elements or themes of works that um, needed attention. So I dug further in, but, but the general thematic element throughout my entire um, span of uh, practicing has been uh, <clears throat> making lemonade. Mm. So in all, so in, 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 in meaning that, you know, we're all are given lemons, mm -hmm. so to say. Um, and I think I have developed this, this way of really appreciating the lemons and really making good lemonade. So um, like for instance, for the past five years, my personal life has gone through these waves of, uh, some might refer to as devastations or giant changes that were mentally compromising, just pure difficulties, but um, the idea of making lemons, um, it was sort of my saving grace to sort of hang on and hang in and persevere. So, you know, this is sort of, and that sort of also got, recalls back to many decades ago, um, with regards to being a Middle Eastern man in, in a Western country, mm -hmm. um, surviving and being creative and uh, <clears throat> sort of uh, developing or having some form of agency to be able to be seen or mm -hmm. to be able to have a conversation outside of myself. So um, if this mumble jumble made any sense, so I, th I think that the, 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 the lemonade, it has definitely been the theme for the past few years for me. Um, the last time I saw you out and when we were all able to, to gather together was when you're at the exhibition that opened at CIIS in San Francisco. That's right, yeah. 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 Um, and that work to me at the time, and I, I wish I had the opportunity to, to write about it, spend more time with it. Um, but I was, I was looking at that and thinking about, um, so layering of materials and mm -hmm. usage of materials, so repurposing materials, um, layering of materials and sort of that accretion of knowledge and experience sort of that, that, that build, that physically builds on, on, mm -hmm. on, you know, on certain ground that you're working with. And that can be canvas, that can be newspaper, that can be uh, magazines, if I remember correctly, um, 
so you seem to, you know, there seems to be something that you're, you know, constantly working through and working through sort of this process of, of processing, if you will. Um, is that a part of the sort of processing what you're describing, like making lemonade out of lemons, sort of that constant trying to understand sort of the, the, the challenges that everything that sort of life sort of throws at us and then trying to, to make the best out of that. Is there a, is there a sort of a parallel in those, in, your Precise. and in that, in that state of mind? Precisely. And you put your finger on it. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, one of, one of my um, sources for my creativity is this multiple um, batches of archives mm -hmm. or, you know, collected objects that I have and which sort of, it, it's a common theme with my uh, sort of object making and that the, the level of uh, appropriation or reappropriation of the material and its content and its definition. And, you know, the newspapers you were referring to were like, you know, there were basically discarded, found newspapers that I sort of created those pieces with, or the book pages, and you know these were discarded books, and you know I have this this thing about the like sort of the print culture, this disappearing technology that at one point was like, um, you know, sort of the bridge for modernity and. Yeah. information and knowledge but um it's sort of disappearing and you know being a object romantic that i am i sort of um uh, i'm still adhere to that the, the beauty of the function of that object so it's sort of so some some of the work that you saw in that show it's like a, it's a commentary for that to that technology and its uh, its old functions, and it was sort of uh, embedded with uh, the idea of censorship and um, erasure and shifting of information, and you know the 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 sh and also the shifting of uh, access of power and power of information, sort of. So yeah, so um, again, literally having these objects that were sort of found to me or I sort of found them. So, I, and I love that. Um, again, it goes to that idea of lemonade. Yeah. So um, yeah, and it, you know, and through this past few, uh, you know, 14 months of isolation, I. I had an immense pleasure of continuously, you know, diving deep in these, and I've been it's super productive because the the daily life uh, was basically the daily life in the studio, unless you I ran out of milk or uh, rice, then I would like leave with my mask on and then return immediately back and yeah. Um, yeah, and and do, uh, and in, in a few months in the in in the isolation, I had to um, give up my studio, you know, because of the finances were not happening. And again, you know, I rolled with the punches. I after seventeen years of having a studio, I had to vacate it and bring everything here. So, and that was another fabulous, inspiring uh, experience because there were certain things forgotten projects that I never got to and sort of that, that idea of sorting and either detaching from things or reorganizing. <clears throat> and that, that, that was really helpful for me. Um, and I think not once I was actually depressed or disappointed um, about that transition of this, you know, losing that space because uh, some something better happened in that process for me mm -hmm. and it, it sort of elevated my sensibilities towards 
my space and my things and my process. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's just more lemonade. Wow. More lemonade. Wow. I mean, it's a very different experience, I think, for that you've had many artists <clears throat> that I know and myself as a writer was struggling to maintain the um, the creative output, the curiosity, the things that at least motivate me as I'm as I'm working through COVID because everything's closed, because we were isolated from one another, because the usual stimuli was not present in our lives. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you had a very different experience than I wouldn't say all, but many other um, people who work in a creative space. Um, so that's, I mean, that's, <clears throat> it's really good to hear that. Yeah, because I feel like uh, I have a choice. I could, I could um, sort of put myself in a position of being sad or devastated mm -hmm. or um, start this new arrangement in a positive note. Yeah. And uh, the latter seemed to be more um, healthy. Yeah. Because you know that you know the mental health of of oneself during these months, were like there were like challenges. I mean, it it was difficult. I mean, aside from being torn apart from your community, your friends, and your loved ones, like uh, you might not make it. I mean, you might be a victim, or you know, all, all these fears that. Um, are real and you know strong and 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 it could creep into your psyche and like just you know break you down. So it's like you know I guess um, I I guess I I guess when, when I, there was a point maybe I feel like you know I'm cornered and uh, you know you don't have a certain choice and. Um, and I guess I made peace with it, you know? It's like, um, I guess I made peace with that that level of limitation yeah. or the not having, uh, it, it seemed to have calculated itself into this new way of thinking and being that was okay. And then, and, and, you know, there are times that I feel extremely blessed and lucky because, you know, I have my health and, you know, there's some level of sanity still remains in my brain, but a um, lot of people that I know personally and some closely suffered severely. Yeah. And um, then recovery from that, it will be, it'll be super difficult. Yeah. So I totally hear that. I, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're thinking about uh, Swana and how that manifests as community here in the Bay Area. Um, mm -hmm. What, how long have you been in the Bay Area? How long have you been in the United States? <laughs> and how, like, what's your experience been of the Swana community uh, in the time that you've lived here in the Bay Area? Well, I've been in the Bay Area since, um... <laughs> 1983 oh, okay yeah and i guess my and i think my immediate involvement that i can think of with any anything in in, in, in that category and sort of it, within a cultural focus would be the the theater company that i got involved with mm -hmm around that time or like maybe 84, 83, 83. Um, it was an Iranian based sort of black box underground theater company. Yeah. You know, all Iranian and the productions were all in Farsi and I started being involved with them by helping them with you know, stage design, stage set building or set painting, blah, blah, blah. And eventually the, the hook came in and they got me on stage and it was like, 
I was a junkie. It, uh, yeah. it, it's like, it was like the, one of the most satisfying experiences um, I could, I could list. Um, so my experience with them, had, and you know, the, all these experiences or these performance, I mean, I, I worked with them for like 20 years and there were never any pay. This was all artistic pro bono for everyone. Yeah. So the money that the ticket sales for, which was not very much, basically went for the cost of production, basically, and renting the space. So there was never a level of profit. So, so I'm saying this because my first experience of that type of cultural community or just regular community it's always been um the element of sustaining doing whatever you're doing and then being able to survive and by that i mean financially because it's it's it was difficult you yeah. know um um and you know the the all, all the painful stuff that we are noticing publicly, like stuff with, you know, with race and separations and all these angst that, you know, different uh, communities are feeling um, was very much there. Um, and even more so towards people like myself from Iran because of, you know, the, the, uh, the, things that were happening uh, politically and stuff in the news yeah. so um yeah so i think uh, and also maybe like some grocery stores in in that you know in in those communities that um you felt like you could have a um sort of a sort of a homey like soul foodish experience by going to these places and purchasing these items that you couldn't find anywhere else and bringing them to your home yeah. and having some almost a spiritual experience by by that exchange so their existence uh, was very helpful on so many levels and I'm sure they were experiencing difficulty paying their bills because you know it's not a it, it was there wasn't a giant community here yeah. in the Bay Area. I mean, there was in Los Angeles or maybe in Washington D.C. or New York, but like Bay Area was very scattered, very very few and yeah. very low profile. Yeah, very low profile. So you've seen it. You've seen this community just grow and change. I mean, that's exponentially. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So much. That's you know, forty years that's passed at this point. Yeah almost 40 years so you've really seen the way in which the swana community has grown and changed and um just absolutely all if that's the word we want to use over the last four decades so you've been witness to all of that mm -hmm. i remember when there was no mosque in downtown oakland yeah and i know that and, and i know i you know you sort of noticed the presence when that mosque was um, created or you know was placed there yeah it, it you know it 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 had a tremendous um acknowledging effect although you know it it it, it, it are like iranian communities are it's complicated because people have uh, multiple understandings and beliefs and uh politically um and many non-Muslim communities that were marginalized there and somehow maybe they felt marginalized here, you know, like the uh, Baha'is or the Zoroastrians or the, the Jewish and the Christians. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think when, when that mosque actually arrived, I think, I think something uh, it feel like it's it's something bigger than just a Islamic mosque. It was like it's sort of a yeah. 
some sort of a cultural anchor because yep. you know people could go there and pray and or do some type of documentation mm -hmm. because they did all certain types of uh, office uh, work as well yeah. but um yeah i remember there was a time that um the only persian restaurant in the bay area there was one in north beach make at it and there was this tiny place on San Pablo in Berkeley. The, these, these, these folks uh, started a kitchen and a sort, of, sort of a restaurant in this old motel. So like I think in, in the 60s or 50s, it was a motel, like all the rooms yeah. were elongated in the parking lot, sort of room, room, room. Yeah. And uh, it was called Alibaba and you would go to this place and you had People drive, would drive here from like Stockton <laughs> to go eat so because there was there was nothing. Yeah, yeah. It was like you know Persian food desert. There was nothing. So like, and yeah. how how uh, how however the quality of these dishes were, mm -hmm. it was a spiritual experience when you were there and eating it because you know, yeah, yeah. it felt like. A, a little flavor of what you rem remembered as home yeah. that you couldn't go back to because of political issues and your affiliations and things like that. So, but now it's like, God, you could call Uber Eats. You could choose an Iranian restaurant. In, <laughs> there's like, there's like three in Berkeley alone. And it's like, <laughs> you know, you can get anything, you, can, you know, to, it seems like the world has gotten smaller. Yeah. But um, but I do I welcome the change and I'm sure all different um, cultures probably have hopefully have the same level of um, comfort and closeness for their for their needs uh, of you know items or things from their homeland to make them feel somehow still connected or yeah. or helps their homesickness. So they can, you know, it's not, it's not as painful. The homesickness is not. As yeah. Painful. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Um, so when you think of the Swana community and you think of the word uh, resources, what comes to mind for you? Yeah. <laughs> well, that, it, it's tricky because again, I'm going to refer back to some experiences that I had um okay so when you say resources i i i assume they're you're referring to because you know back in those theater days in you know in the early 90s yeah. you know to to get funded for a certain project or writing a grant it was a huge ordeal yeah. i mean it was like you know almost like trying to you know go to vegas and win money it's like a gamble and you know there wasn't so much out there so, um, but now I think there's there because of this this nonprofit phenomena and um, these uh, well designed culture production projects that dictates the language of grants mm -hmm. and fits categories for funding. Um, it's so much easier. You can actually, you know, they're like hundreds of grant writers are available. You could hire them. Some of them <laughs> they have different rates. You can hire them by the hour. You yeah. can hire them by the project. Yeah. And um, yeah, so so I think um, I have, I, I had a very minimal experience with um, these types of cultural productions I sort of yeah. if the project that I was involved with and it was sort of I had the my my authorship was key uh, I basically funded it myself as as minimum minimal as possible or for what so very few projects that I was involved like you know there was like few cultural exchange 
shows and um, you know accumulations of activities that I, I don't know if you know Tarana Hemami who's oh she's actually in, in the group of artists here so she she organized she got funding for it she brought together different layers of and generations of artists together that was super helpful for the community um, and I think as far as resource I think it's resource is so much I assume that it's so much better now where um, where back then it, you know it was like to write a grant for this thing and you spend all this time in paperwork and this and that and then after all of it you're not going to get it you know you will get to magic theater again for the 75,000th time you know so um i think i think everything's on a more positive note now i think you, things are NEA grants are i think just the app away you can just press apply and your project could be funded. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think that's that's good. People can um, fund their projects and realize hopefully good projects that um, resonate to the community. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it's good, but you know, then there's other stuff and you won't, we won't, I won't, I won't say anything, but I just so, so we know sure. that we know. Yeah. It's a wink, wink kind of thing, you know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> yeah. All right, my friend. Um, yeah, you can you can edit this part out if you want. <laughs> um, all right. So the last question, like, what are you thinking about right now? Right now, well, I mean, in a in the midst of uh, in a sort of a in a midstream of creativity i'm i'm working on multiple pieces right now um so a few paintings i'm doing my um redaction series on book pages and um and there, uh, there's a couple of lovely interest of possible shows for me soon so that's super exciting and and you know it's lovely to have that in the background because you know um uh it's 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 hard to be creative and sustain that creativity and not and not work towards a, a moment of showing or being seen and just creating work in the void yeah. um so i feel blessed so right now i'm super inspired um last week i was doing i was i was looking like a lumber i was like shaved wood all over me because i was doing some building some uh, giant stretcher bars yeah to do a lot of woodworking here um and you know adjusting to the space because like this the Aside from my stuff that I had here, I brought in 17 years of studio material and things. And so my dining table is my new woodworking table. And, okay. um, but um, I'm, I, I, again, I feel very blessed um, to feel creative, to feel like, um, I'm hopeful. I'm very positive. I um, and I think that that's something to be very thankful for. I'm 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 really happy. And I sort of thanks to um, social media, I see the communities kind of waking up or coming out of their shells, coming out of their tunnels, and things are happening. People are going to shows and events are happening. However, it's kind of still kind of skittish. There are things popping, and it's a little scary, but um yeah I'm, I'm you know i in fact i don't get up in the mornings i i leave and you know do things and it feels like oh, oh. things are not things okay things are okay you know things are um 
Absolutely. There's hope. So I'm, 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 I'm super positive and hopeful. Um, thankful. Um, and you know, then again, you guys are doing this and it's, it's, it's a fabulous, uh, platform and, um, it's, it, it's well needed and very timely. And, um, yeah, so I consider myself lucky Mr. Lemonade, you know, I'm, I love my lemons, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for this uh, just thoughtful and you know ever illuminating conversation with you. Are you kidding? Pleasure was mine. Um, I could do this for the rest of the day. So um, <laughs> this was purely my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right. Yeah. Um, everyone who tuned in, thank you for joining us for another of the Zemin Project interviews and uh, come back for the next one. We'll be here. Thanks everyone. Bye.